Welcome to Eastern Hospitality. I'm Father Moses from Holy Resurrection Monastery in St. Nazians, Wisconsin. And I'm Mother Gabriella from Christ the Bridegroom Monastery in Burton, Ohio. Today is our Pascha episode. We're preparing for Pascha. Uh, pretty soon we'll be saying Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. <laughs> <laughs> so this week we're going to be talking a lot about all the foods that we prepare throughout Holy Week to be blessed in the coming Holy Saturday or on Pascha at church. So the different traditional meats and breads and things like that, that, that you can be preparing this week uh, in order to also prepare for Christ's resurrection. So what would, be, what would be the first thing we should start with? Let's start with the breads. The okay. breads represent Christ himself. Mm -hmm. um, they're sweet breads. They're very rich breads. Okay. So there's a lot of eggs and sugar. Eggs and, and butter and mm. milk, all the <laughs> stuff that we've avoided for the past mm. 40 days. <laughs> so we've got three different varieties here today okay. um, from three different ethnic traditions. Um, we have our Ukrainian Ruthenian uh, variety here, which is decorated with a, with a braid and a three-barred cross on top. Okay. We have a Russian kulich, which is really loaded with eggs and uh, and butter mm. and it's it's very rich it's it's kind of a cross between a cake and a bread mm -hmm. um, how'd you it, get it to be so tall I baked it in a big canister okay and it's it's full of raisins that have been soaked in vodka and <laughs> all, all, all the good stuff is in there mm -hmm. and then my favorite is the Romanian variety here mm -hmm. which is a, a sweet dough okay. but it has like a, a cheesecake filling in the center oh. real rich and, and creamy <laughs> Everything good. That's right. <laughs> Everything you want Everything in the pasta. Everything good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we talked a little bit about the bread, but but what about the meat? Oh, <laughs> the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. What are, what's the what's the main meat that we're we're looking at over okay, here? Okay. Well, we've got uh, uh, a ham here. Okay. In Northern Europe, in Eastern Europe, uh, the the pig was much more the animal of choice. It okay. would be slaughtered in the fall and uh, preserved throughout the winter, so it's ready for Pascha, okay. hanging in the, the, the nice smoke all winter long. <laughs> and what, there's a different, looks like there's a glaze on there? Yes, this is a brown sugar and mustard glaze with, with cloves. Okay. Um, the other meat we have here is a roast leg of lamb. Okay. Um, in Southern Europe, in, in Greece, and in, in the Middle East, that would be more the, 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 the choice for Easter. Okay. It represents the Pascha lamb, um, and it's much more common. In the spring, in Greece, in the Middle East, baby lambs running all over the place. <laughs> so we might as well eat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then those potatoes, those were roasted along with the lamb? Yes, I roasted the potatoes along in, in, in the fat that came off of the... Right in the oven? Right in the oven with the, with the fat from the lamb. Oh, so they'll good. Be, they'll be nice and, <laughs> nice and tasty. Yes. <laughs> What's really great also about the, the roast lamb and the ham is that it can be prepared ahead of time, so you're not having to be cooking so much on Pascha. Uh, and it, it reminds us both of the richness of Christ as well as the joy that we have in Christ and also in eating meat. <laughs> That's right. It's been a long time. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Can't wait. Two other meats that we have uh, for the traditional Easter basket would be uh, kielbasa or sausage and also bacon, <laughs> my personal favorite. But could you, Father Moses, tell me a little bit about the sausage that you prepared? Okay, it's a traditional Eastern European kielbasa. Okay. Um, I ground about 60 pounds of pork, <laughs> pork butt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Got about 10 pounds of fresh garlic mixed into in there. Mm, okay. um, marjoram, salt, pepper. Okay. Um, it cured overnight, and then we stuffed it in the casings and smoked it for about three days. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like the, there we go, like the resurrection. Three, That's right. <laughs> three, days, three days in the, the smokehouse. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the bacon? You cured that, right? Yes, I cured the bacon as well. I, I take a nice fresh uh, pork belly. Mm -hmm. and it gets uh, salted and mm -hmm. it gets sugar and curing salt and again spices, thyme and uh, juniper berries and mm. garlic okay. and it goes in the fridge for about five or six days um, and then it, it goes into the smokehouse for about five days as well. Um, and, and again both of these things they're cured and prepared ahead of time, so you've got okay. no work for the feast. They're ready to eat. <laughs> Wonderful. Next, let's take a look at the egg traditions that we have. 
One would be hard boiled eggs, uh, representing the new life as well as the resurrection in the, in the symbol of the egg. Um, what, what's, I know there's something, what's the sim symbolic tradition to do with red eggs? Well, the, the Greeks and the Arabs and the Romanians tend to only use red eggs. They don't use the other colors. And it represents the blood of Christ. Oh, okay. What kind of traditions, do they have any fun traditions that go along with that? Oh, yes, cracking eggs. Christos Anesti. Oh, Alito Anesti. You win, my bro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very cool. Um, can you tell us about the, the sweet Easter cheese that you made for us? Sure. So one tradition that is in the Ruthenian Ukrainian churches uh, and that we do at the monastery is make the traditional egg cheese, which you, you crack eggs and milk and sugar, um, maybe a little bit of vanilla. It makes kind of like a custard and you cook it for about 45 minutes on a very low heat double boiler, um, stirring constantly. <laughs> um, and then it, it's, it kind of turns into this scrambled egg type mixture. Um, when it starts to do that, you, you would dump it into a strainer with cheesecloth. You tie it up for about an hour um, so that it makes like a, a ball and, and all of the egg kind of sits and, and congeals together into a nice firm cheese-like mixture. Um, well, it certainly smells delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> That's why I learned how to make it, so I make sure we have it on Easter. Good for you. Um, what about this? There's an, this is another kind of cheese, right? This is a Russian uh, cheese, uh, also called a pasca. It's a, a very creamy uh, cheese mixture. It's full of butter and sour cream and cottage cheese and mm. uh, cream. and. Uh, I take currants and Ooh. raisins, and <laughs> I, I think this time I put dried cherries. I soak them in vodka again, <laughs> and then it goes into the mold, and it uh, sits in the mold for a few sits days. Sits in the mold, all the the liquid dries out. It gets a little firm, mm -hmm. and uh, it's tradition to spread that on the sli a slice of kulich. Mm. Goes really nice together. Mm. <laughs> I bet that's great. So the Russians would take that pasca cheese and spread it on the on a, a slice of the kulich. Mm -hmm. But it's it's really neat how they cut the kulich. They cut the top off okay. and save it. And you would then slice how much you're going to use, mm -hmm. and then you would put the top back on. It kind of seals it, okay. and it uh, it keeps it fresh throughout throughout Bright Week. Oh, nice! So you just take the top off. Take a cut slice, a slice and put it back. Smear the, the pasca on it. Oh, good. <laughs> Next, we'll take a look at the buttered lamb, which is another form of dairy that we've been fasting from. Um, typically, you would fashion your butter into the shape of a lamb in representation of Christ. You can find different things to mold the lamb online or at a local store. We even have some of our local supermarkets have them, um, just depending on what part of the country you're from. Um, In our monastery, where we get quite a crowd, I use the big uh, lamb cake mold. Oh, wow. <laughs> that wouldn't last very long. <laughs> One or two brothers go through it. That's, that's right, it. <laughs> and there's no more butter. So <laughs> it takes about five pounds of butter. To <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, another, another condiment, if you will, that we have in the basket is typically salt. Um, you can either put that in a salt shaker or a small container, um, and it's representative of, of how we're all called to be the salt of the earth, um, and it's also just very necessary in every meal. That's right. <laughs> it's my favorite condiment. So, <laughs> um, And then last, we have the, the beets with horseradish. Um, and what, what's, the, what's the significance behind, behind that particular dish? The, uh, the beets and horseradish represent um, the bitter herbs served at uh, the Passover meal. And it's something very delicious, especially with ham and kielbasa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it's a very delicious acquired taste. <laughs> <laughs> Some other items that you can find in an Easter basket would be maybe other things such as wine, um, pastries like nut roll, chocolates, cheese, um, any anything basically that you fasted from, pretty right? much yeah anything that you've uh, you fasted from if you belong to a, a different ethnic tradition that you celebrate w with uh, other foods um, mm -hmm. feel free to include them we have a, a number of Mexican families that come to the monastery that include tamales or chili mm -hmm. in their uh, in, in in their basket because they've abstained from that and it's what they'll they'll celebrate the feast with so mm -hmm. include whatever you want make 
your Easter basket your own. Don't feel that you have to just stick, stick to, to someone these. else's right. tradition. So exactly. You can also bring other items to be blessed, such as chotki or icons. Uh, any any religious article that you'd like to be blessed could also be brought with your Easter basket for the blessing. The last essential piece to your Easter basket would be the cover, which traditionally would have some kind of embroidered Christ is risen, Christos was crest, and would look something like this um, with a, a cross and, like I said, the, the words Christ is risen. Um, and then it would be placed over the basket like this just to cover it up, probably just a practical reason of keeping thing, <laughs> things out of it or maybe even <laughs> stray fingers <laughs> before it's blessed. Um, and you can typically, you could make your own or you could possibly find that online um, at different uh, online retailers. Well, an age-old tradition amongst the Russians, before we break into all this good, delicious food, we're going to have a shot of vodka. Uh-oh, okay. Prepares <laughs> your stomach for all the food that we've been ab abstaining from for okay. so long. So let's, break let's in. do it, because well, I'm getting hungry. Whoops, I, I accidentally have a couple shot glasses right here. <laughs> Right. So you just froze that bottle of vodka right with those flowers? Yep. Is that okay? Put them in a pot with some flowers and stuck it in the freezer. Okay. Makes Very. a nice centerpiece and keeps your vodka cold and All right. Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. Woo! All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this Pascha episode. Uh, and while we're breaking into all these foods, we're gonna send it over to Bishop John Michael, who's actually your bishop, right? Yes, Bishop of the Romanian Greek Catholics in Canton, Ohio. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you soon. God Christ bless. is risen. Indeed, he is risen. <laughs> thank you, Father Moses and Mother Gabriella. I'm not sure which I look forward to more at Easter time, the Easter services, the celebration of the resurrection, or the Easter food. So I'm glad that you're contributing at least that part. And we'll also do the best we can with the other. But Easter, or Pascha, as I prefer to call it, is uh, so much more than a celebration, so much more than a holiday. Even though I think we Eastern Christians really know how to do it right, we really know how to celebrate the resurrection. On the Feast of the Resurrection, I'm not so sure that we or anybody and so good at celebrating the resurrection the rest of the year. We put so much into this celebration for a good reason. It's to remind us that uh, it's a resurrected life that we're supposed to live. And that when we spend the 40 days after the Feast of the Resurrection greeting one another, Christ is risen, indeed he is risen. As we say in Romanian, Christos anviat, devarat anviat. Christos vos cres, vos tino vos cres, Christos anesti, alithos anesti. It's in every tradition or every language of the Byzantine tradition, because it's such a popular and such an important thing to remind one another that Christ is risen. The reason we have to remind one another is because living a resurrected life is at best a second thought most of the time, most of the rest of the year. We try to live in such a way as to guarantee a good life, as to guarantee, as best we can, our survival, uh, our safety and security, to try to accomplish those things for ourselves and for the people that we love. And we don't give it a second thought that perhaps we're engaging in the biggest waste of time there could be. We've been given time to live a resurrected life now that we know that Christ is risen. Now that we know that by his death, He's conquered death. And so the resurrected life that we're supposed to live somehow has to reflect this understanding too, that it's not something that comes for free, like the publisher's clearinghouse uh, sweepstakes. It's something that's been earned. We didn't earn it. Jesus Christ earned it for us, and he earned it by his obedience until death and through death to the resurrection. So if we live a resurrected life, if we have been risen, as Christ is risen, then it's important to try to live from moment in, moment out, in the consciousness of that resurrection. And therefore, 
That's why it's important, at least now, for these 40 days, to be like the apostles, to be like Mary Magdalene, coming back to the apostles from the tomb. I've seen him. He has risen. And to acknowledge that he has risen indeed. This gift that we've been given is not cheap. It was purchased with Christ's own blood. And sometimes it's not cheap for us either because even though we can't earn it, even though we can't merit it, to live out of it requires a commitment to follow Jesus day in and day out, moment in and moment out. Wherever he goes, there we go. In order to be raised with him, we have to be baptized with him. And when we are baptized with him, that means we're crucified with him. Our steps lead to Golgotha. And from there, to the resurrection. There's no way around it. Life could be simpler. God could have had another kind of plan to achieve our salvation and our divinization, but this is not God's plan. What God's plan was, was to send, was to come himself, to send his son, to be one of us, to go through every dark aspect and element of human life, including poverty, including homelessness, including rejection, including capital punishment. As we remind one another that Christ is risen, let's take that to heart internally as a reminder to choose to live moment in and moment out a resurrected life. And by that I mean a life that completely depends on an understanding, a living consciousness, something alive in our hearts that remind us, reminds us that our survival is guaranteed, that not only is Christ risen, we are risen indeed, that our life is immortal and eternal. And so we've been given this time and time and space not to try to prolong it, not to try to make it easier, not to try to pretend that life doesn't have its troubles, its difficulties, not to try to pretend in fact, that the world isn't writhing in agony from one end of the globe to the other on every continent, from Africa to the Middle East, to Latin America, to North America, to Asia. And even Antarctica and all around the world, the effects of sin are being felt. And because of sin, life is not the paradise, the Garden of Eden that it could have been that it was supposed to be. But the garden's been reopened. And we've been given an opportunity to enter it, not just when we die and rise, but right now. We can live the resurrection this moment. We can live as if Christ were really alive in us, as if he were really busy by the power of his Holy Spirit divinizing us, raising us from the dead, taking us through Golgotha, through the cross, through the tomb, to a new life, a life of generosity, a life of service, a life of love, a divine life. As we put our baskets together and prepare for this awesome celebration, it would be well to remember that Nothing that we put into these baskets is going to lead to the eternal life that we've already been baptized into. The Romanians have an expression. God gives you everything you need, but he doesn't put it into your basket. So as we prepare our Easter baskets, we put in these good things that are going to help us get some life out of life, that are gonna help us celebrate our life together with our families, with our friends, to become aware of the sweetness of the life that God has given us. Let us think of all the things that we could be putting into that basket that God has given us. I'm sure, ham and pasca and butter and cheese and eggs, those are all wonderful things. But what about mercy, kindness, love, peace, forgiveness, generosity, peace of heart, reconciliation with one another as we sit around the table? These are all the things that God has given us in abundance, but he leaves it up to us to pick it up, to 
put it into our basket, and to add it into our lives. So live the resurrected life that you have been given. Be the gift that God has already given you. And as you celebrate with your family, with your friends, this awesome reality behind our existence, the reason that we are Christians in the first place, please don't forget all of those for whom Christ also died. All those that we too have been asked to put into the basket of our concern, our care, and our love. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Thank you.